my pleasure and honor to be here in Morocco. Um, I don't know how many times, but I'm here regularly since 2008. Um, and I'm very honored to be in your university and your faculty, Professor Sharaibi, and also to be in the conference uh, with uh, the very active president and former president of the MENA region, Professor Jamal Ben Qadir, and Professor uh, Peter Schwartz, the honorary president of this uh, meeting and the actual president of the International Diabetes Federation since few years, a uh, few days, sorry. Uh, I'm going to talk about adolescent obesity. And adolescent obesity is one of the most serious public health problems and challenges in the 21st centuries. The problem is a global problem affecting middle-income, low-income countries and also uh, high-income countries, particularly in urban population. The prevalence of uh, obesity in adolescents is alarming and this is the global prevalence of uh, obesity in teen age, uh, sorry, in teen age and in children between five and 19 years. We are having more than 340 million children and adolescents suffering from obesity, and these are uh, the countries with highest prevalence of obesity. We can find USA with a prevalence of uh, obesity between nine and nine, uh, between um, 19, uh, up to 19 years old, we are having between uh, 25 to 30 percent prevalence of obesity. While in some Arabic countries in the um, Middle East and North Africa, like Egypt and uh, uh, Gulf countries, we are having obesity between 20 to 25 percent, and in some countries like Morocco, uh, the percentage is a little bit less. Uh, those are some risk factors for adolescent and childhood obesity. The parental obesity more than doubles the risk for adult obesity among obese and non-obese children below the age of 10. Weight gain and nutrient during Pregnancy also is another risk factor for adulthood obesity. And among children older than three years old, being overweight or obese is a strong predictor of obesity later on in life. Overweight and obese children are more likely to be obese and to stay obese in adulthood, and they are more likely to develop non-communicable diseases like cardiovascular disease and diabetes. This are some other risk factors, parental weight, social classes, some uh, races, uh, one parent household educational level, uh, parental income, parental employment, TV viewing, the number of siblings, because if the number of siblings is not um, um, having many siblings, the young uh, child or young adult may influence their families to uh, buy uh, junk food all the time or um, uh, soft drinks and so. Uh, high caloric intake, high dietary fat intake, and physical activity level when reduced. Some other causes of childhood obesity, there are a range of factors affecting uh, and they act in combination. We are living in an obesogenic environment. These factors include obesity in both parents, the family environment, family genetics, some psychological factors, and the child body type. A genetic effect, childhood obesity is often as a result of interplay between many genetic and environmental factors. Polymorphism in various genes, controlling appetite and metabolism, predispose to obesity and uh, especially when there is sufficient caloric intake. We are having over 200 genes affecting weight by determining the activity level, 
food preferences, body type, and metabolism. And having two copies of allele called FTO increases the incidence of both obesity and diabetes. Family practice, um, decreasing the number of uh, mothers who breastfeed using infant formula instead. Uh, less children go outside and engaging in active play. The presence of technologies like TV and video games keep children indoors. Family practice, rather than walking or biking to um, the school, family usually take her, their children to school by car. As family size decrease, the children and young adults force adults to do what they want. They ask for candy and soda drinks. School practice, like school lunch, physical activity is reduced in school and classes of physical activity is replaced by some scientific uh, sessions. Uh, fast food restaurants, access to parks, bike or bus. And this is a study showing the prevalence of obesity in children by hours of TV per day. And we can find that those seeing the TV or TV viewing more than five hours per day, the prevalence of obesity is 36% compared to 19% in those um, having one hour only uh, TV view per day. Those are the health impact of obesity on children and young adults according to uh, the IESU, the European Association for the Study of Obesity, classifying obesity as a chronic disease in children and adulthood. The World Health Organization, childhood obesity is one of the most serious public health challenges of the 21st century. And those are the comorbidities and complications of obesity in uh, pediatric uh, age group and adolescent age group. Pseudotumor cerebri, prehypertension and hypertension, nuffle, sleep apnea, early subclinical atherosclerosis, cardiovascular morbidity and premature mortality in adulthood, dyslipidemia, prediabetes and type 2 diabetes, hyperandrogenemia, polycystic ovary syndrome, proteinuria, focal glomerular, uh, uh, glo uh, segmental glomerulonephritis, and the slipped capital femoral epiphysis, some other complications like early menarche, um, uh, eating disorders like anorexia and bulimia nervosa, psychological problems, emotional and psychological, uh, those children and young adults are harassed or discriminated against by even their own family with low self-esteem and depression. These are the guidelines and management for treatment of obesity in children and adolescents. And according to the stage of the problem, to prevent by office-based support and behavior of five fruits and vegetable servings per day and less than two hours of screen um, hours per day, screen time or TV viewing or games, and more than one hour of physical activity. If the problem is more, we can uh, go to specially trained staff in office and to reduce caloric intake plan, less than one hour of screening time uh, and for uh, class three, a dedicated weight management prog program and more frequent contact, more structured monitoring goals. And for tertiary care, uh, special centers for uh, reduction of weight in uh, those young adults or children and medication, surgery, meal replacement, ongoing behavioral change. These are the recommendations for family-centered intervention according to the Endocrine Society to educate families about healthy food and exercise habits, the nice to encourage patients, uh, parents sorry, to lose weight if they are overweight or obese. 
These are the IGF recommendations about the healthy lifestyle and diet for general population. I, I will not go through all of these, but for WHO recommendations on physical activity, children and young adults between 5 and 17 years old, they should do at least 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous intensity physical activity per day. And these are the recommendations for pharmacotherapy in children and uh, adolescents uh, with obesity or overweight. FDA approved liraglutide and Orlistat for those aged 12 or more. Semaglutide approved again more than 12 years. Terzibatide approved more than 18 years. And fentramine to those aged more than 16 years. Uh, the European Medical Agency a more conservative. Uh, recently, they approved liraglutide and semaglutide as a pharmacotherapy for age uh, more than 12 years. Type 2 diabetes is linked to obesity in young adults and in children, and one in three children born in U.S. after the um, year 2000 will become diabetic in the future. Before 1990, only 5% of children and adolescents diagnosed as uh, diabetes were classified as type 2. Now this uh, accounts for 30 to 50% of new cases of diabetes in use. And this parallel the national data estimating tripling in the rate of overweight and adoles in adolescents in the past 20 years and Type 2 diabetes in adolescents is considered number one consequence of epidemic of obesity. These are the risk factors for uh, childhood type 2 diabetes according to Diabetes Canada. And one important item is obesity with BMI more than 95th percentile. Again, these are the clinical features. A diagnosis of type 2 diabetes in young adults and adolescents, obesity is found in 95% of uh, those type 2 diabetes in adolescents. When and how to screen young adults, adolescents, or children for diabetes, according to AGA, in those with over age more than 85th percentile or obese more than 95th percentile and having at least one or more additional risk factor. And according to Diabetes Canada, when pubertal and uh, three or more risk factors beginning from the age of eight, imagine, now we are talking about the age of eight and not 10. And having two risk factors, and some of these risk factors include Arabic race, among other races like African, Asian, Hispanic. Uh, and who to screen? Those with impaired fasting glycemia or impaired glucose tolerance, and those with polycystic ovary syndrome, and the use of atypical antipsychotic medications. How to screen the recommended screening according to Diabetes Canada, hemoglobin A1C and fasting or random plasma glucose. And if there is discrepancy between the two readings of hemoglobin A1C and fasting plasma glucose, we go for oral glucose tolerance test. Uh, diagnosis is the same like in adults. And how can we stop the cardiometabolic epidemic? It is a team approach between endocrinologist, physician, general practitioner, diabetes educators, dietitians, students themselves, and family, school, media. The main message, parents are an important influence on their children's eating and activity habits. And change will take time, begin by taking a few small steps. Thank you very much.